Poland and America have been linked for over two centuries in the quest for freedom. That is why Poles have come to America and why Americans have gone to Poland. For over 200 years, for over 200 years, there is a real history of sacrifice between our two nations. Sacrifice for the cause of American freedom and sacrifice for the cause of Polish freedom. And for the first time in history, today Americans and Poles share the same freedom after two centuries of struggle. And now our collective agenda is being renewed as both of our countries support Ukraine. And Ambassador Mark Brzezinski joins us now. Uh, Mark, very good to see you. Uh, talk about how important the president's trip was for the people of Poland, for the NATO alliance, and for all those interested uh, in promoting freedom across Europe and the globe. Joe, thank you so much for having me. In terms of its importance for the people of Poland, I will simply quote what Polish leaders are saying to the Polish people today. They're saying, President Biden, dba o wasz i dba o wasze bezpieczeństwo. President Biden cares about you in Poland and he cares about your security. What a reinforcement of the president's message that leaders around Poland are giving to their people. And to the alliance, to the NATO alliance, the message was collective defense works. We've developed in 2022 and 2023. Who would have thought it? We've developed a unity of purpose and we've developed a shared definition of the challenge. Despite our differing self interests, we have a shared definition of the challenge. That was the importance of President Biden's risky and brave trip to Kiev and his visit to Poland. Uh, you know, um, it, it's very interesting uh, when uh, I was over visiting you and uh, we had a roundtable with Polish leaders uh, from the government, from the media, elsewhere. Um, it's remarkable the change in relations between Poland and the United States, which got a bit frayed uh, over the past several years, and what those relations were uh, when you first became ambassador and what those relations now, in large part, because of the war. Can you explain that? Because there is certainly an understanding. Um, I spoke to the Secretary of Defense this week, the Secretary of State, Jake Sullivan, National Security Advisor, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Every one of them talk about the central role that Poland plays in the promotion of freedom moving forward. Well, thank you, Joe, for that question. And a central role of Poland is the right way of putting it. Please remember that 80% of all the supplies coming into Ukraine to support the Ukrainian people, to help them defend themselves, 80% of all the supplies come through Poland. And on the flip side, Poland is hosting millions of refugees, each one of them in someone's house or home here in Poland. And so it's an incredible story. Um, the, the, I, I, I have to say that the role Poland is playing right now is absolutely critical to this alliance and its projection of collective defense to work. Um, and I think that the president has been magnificent in cobbling together an alliance of more than 50 countries to get this done. Ambassador, good morning. It's good to see you again. Um, obviously, the threat you. from Russia remains one year in. It's not gone the way Vladimir Putin expected it would. But still, there's widespread suffering, as you know well, in Ukraine. Can you speak to where the Bucharest Nine, those eastern flank European countries, where they are on the future of this war, where you believe it's headed, and how long you're prepared to, to hang in for this fight? Sure. Well, the message from the alliance and from President Biden 
is that we will defend every square inch of NATO territory, and that includes each one of the countries of the Bucharest Nine. Here in Poland, we have over 10,000 U.S. troops currently deployed all across Poland, all on Polish bases, standing shoulder to shoulder with Polish, shoulder, with Polish soldiers. So I can report to you that in Poland, the message is clear that the country is safe, that the country is secure. And that's the case with all the Bucharest Nine. At the same time, you know, for this part of the wor world, Willie, this moment is 1939. Mm. This moment here in Central Europe is akin to the Nazi invasion of Poland and Central Europe in 1939, except this time in 2022 and 2023, the Central Europeans can do something about it. So they're taking in refugees, they're applying supplies to Ukraine so that the Ukrainians can defend themselves, and it's working. And the, pre the President Biden's message, his role in this part of the world, could not be more embraced or more popular. And I think that was seen in Old Town in Warsaw two nights ago when we expected a crowd of about 10,000 people and we had almost 35,000 people mm. there listening on a cold February night in Warsaw, Poland, to our president reassure them. It says a lot about America's leadership in the world today. Mr. Ambassador, uh, if you could draw on that last remark and pull it out a bit on the president's personality and the impact it had on his meetings with the alliance, his meetings with the Bucharest Nine. I noted that uh, Secretary, that uh, Ambassador Stoltenberg referred to him as Joe in conversation before the, uh, before the alliance. And President Biden's personality, his impact on that stage, on, on the country that you represent now in Poland. Tell us about it. Thanks, Mike. Well, I think that President Biden's personality is a power unto itself. And here's what I mean. In the Polish-American community, President Biden is known uh, warmly and colloquially as President Bidensky. The Polish-American community knows that President Biden comes from the state, Delaware, with a strong Polish-American community, and he was one of the spearheads to, to enlarge NATO, to include Poland. And so NATO expansion is what allowed the removal of the dividing lines between East and West in Europe to um, the, the, the removal of those dividing lines and a coherent sense of security to be to emerge in Central and Eastern Europe. Um, and that his role in that is very well known. I would say also here in Central Europe, his public embrace of the refugees, his public embrace of people is magnificent. I'll just share this story. We had a meet and greet at the U.S. Embassy yesterday for President Biden to meet the hundreds of Americans who work with the American Embassy here. And President Biden spontaneously, from the warmth of his heart, invited all the children to join him on the stage as he spoke to the American Embassy community. And so I have this memory in, the, in my mind of President Biden on stage with about 30 children, all having a moment that they will remember for the rest of their lives. That's a metaphor of the love, the warmth, and most importantly in this part of the world, the empathy that President Biden projects. When Joe Scarborough came here at the end of January, to take part in the commemoration of the liberation of Auschwitz. It was evident from that visit and, and that day how empathy has to be a word that one thinks of when one thinks of the history in this part of the world. This part of the world has endured a lot of suffering. The Holocaust, the world's worst crime in history, the Soviet occupation, and now the crisis in Ukraine. No one does empathy. No one has genuinely empathy like President Biden, and it is in it, tune with the challenges of this yeah. moment here in Central Europe. It, it is something that uh, you could see immediately stepping off the plane in Warsaw, something you saw across Poland, of course, something you saw 
at Auschwitz that uh, history hangs heavily over the Polish people. They are so grateful uh, that the United States is there, so grateful uh, for uh, President Biden. It's why he has an 82 percent approval rating right now in Poland, uh, which is remarkable in and of itself uh, for many of the reasons, uh, Mark, that you just brought up. All right, U.S. Ambassador to Poland, Mark Brzezinski, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We greatly appreciate it. <laughs>